eighth in my series of musings on my all-time favourite science fiction novels. Hope you're enjoying them as much as I'm enjoying revisiting these books. Today I will be talking about a book that became the start of an epic series, Julian May's The Many Coloured Land. Now this is the first book in what became the Saga of the Exiles, or sometimes known as the Pliocene Saga. This sweeping epic was also interlinked with May's later Galactic Milieu series, which was almost a sideways prequel, if there's such a thing, to the Many Coloured Land. An interesting concept when you consider that Many Coloured Land was set six million years earlier than the prequel. Having just reread the entire four book series, I have formed a controversial opinion, which is that the series almost reads like a proto version of George R. R. Martin's A Song of Fire and Ice. Now, while Martin's series, written years later, is far larger in scale and depth and detail, and quite frankly, graphic gore, there are commonalities. Both contain elements of science fiction, fantasy, and medieval cultural affectations. Both have a large cast of characters, with even tangential ones fleshed out and fully realised. Both have deep political intrigue amongst multiple races and groupings, and both have shifting alliances and exotic existential threats, and both have villains with explainable motivations, and sometimes not, and flawed heroes. Now, whereas Martin's world is a completely fictional one, May has set her series in the Earth's past, the geological era known as the Pliocene, approximately six million years ago. This allows her to create a setting that is both familiar but also different enough to be almost alien, with very different geological and physical landscapes. You know, for instance, in the first book, uh, Many Coloured Land, the Mediterranean basin is empty of water. Uh, a different climate is also you know, there, and, and a completely different set of flora and fauna. But the author, uh, Julian May, sadly passed away at the age of 86 in 2017. She was a Chicago native and a very much a pioneer for women in science fiction and the convention scene. The Many Coloured Land was first published in 1981, but, it, uh, but I didn't read it until I got a gift uh, box of all four books in the series in the late 1980s. And I was immediately smitten and have reread the whole series multiple times, getting more from it each time. And in fact, I've just reread it again. As always, a quick spoiler warning, I try not to get too plot specific, especially about the endings of novels, but please be aware there will be some spoilers ahead. And if you like this video, then please check out my other videos on science fiction novels and my other content. Uh, and please hit subscribe and click the bell for notifications. So I'm going to focus uh, specifically on the first book in the series, as to delve into all four would make this a extremely long video. Uh, the, the Many Coloured Land faces the difficulty many series openers have in that it has to establish the scope, the settings and the cast of characters. Some reviewers may be tempted to focus on the later books which have all the action in them, but I love the first book as I feel May does this scene setting particularly well and the dramatic climax to the book truly sets up the conflicts to come in the rest of the series. The book begins in the modern day, which in, the, in this case is the late 21st century. Now, many humans in this book now have fully realised metapsychic powers. They are operants in the parlance of the book. Earth and its numerous colony planets through the galaxy are now part of a collective of operants societies with several alien races known as the Galactic Milieu. And to many, particularly the non-operant with no mind powers, this largely peaceful but well-regulated ga galaxy is dull and suffocating. But there's a curious kink in this future Earth in that there is time travel of a very particular specific kind and due to a geological freak, a one-way time portal exists in a specific location in France. This gateway allows one-way travel to the same location six million years ago and nothing can come back without the six million year time jump destroying them. 
The guardian of this portal is a Madame Gunerian, and gradually she allows misfits, adventurers and rebels to pass through this portal to escape the suffocating modern era. First two thirds of the book introduce the humans in one group who will take this journey. There is Elizabeth, a one-time Grandmaster operant who lost her powers and her husband in a terrible accident. Felice, a dangerous teenage prodigy in the violent sport of ring hockey. Richard, a disgraced xenophobic starship pilot. Brian, an anthropologist who is following an unrequited lover through the portal. Claude, an aged explorer looking for adventure after his wife's death. And his friend, Amory, a medic and nun on a spiritual quest. There's also Stein Olsen, a hard-living, hard-drinking engineer, and Aiken Drum, an incurable trickster and shit disturber who chooses the portal rather than mental shackling for his crimes. And all are fleeing the comfort of the modern era for what they call exile. So the book describes the, how the portal operates and the preparations to pass through in detail. No modern weapons are allowed in the past. Women are sterilized and modern equipment is programmed to decay after 100 years. All this to prevent interference with the future. Although apparently there is no record of these people uh, in the current day future. So perhaps uh, no paradox can, be, uh, can exist. The big day arrives for this group and this uh, they pass through the portal and to their utter shock, instead of a primitive unspoilt land populated by a few human misfits, they find that Pliocene Earth is ruled by an alien race called the Tanu, who fled their own galaxy. All humans coming through the portal are either willingly or unwillingly pressed into the service of the Tanu. The tall and beautiful Tanu wield metapsychic powers, but through devices called torques. Golden torques give the Tanu powers and uh, and grey torques are used to control subservient humans. And they've also got a long-standing conflict with their cousin race, the Fervulac, who are physically unattractive, but have some true uh, limited oper operant powers without the torques. So strangely enough, although alien, the Tanu are genetically close enough to humans to mate, and hybrid Tanu human children exist. Their festivals, customs, medieval martial practices, and even some of their stories and songs seem strangely familiar to humans, despite there being no trace of the Tanu in the future of six million years hence. And so the struggle begins. The Tanu factions vie for supremacy, mainly between those who welcome human influence and technology and traditionalists who don't. Tanu fight Fervulac, who ally with escaped free humans. And there is also an outcast race of, called the Howlers, who are genetically uh, decayed uh, Fervulag because of the Earth's uh, greater radiation than the home planet of Tanu and Fervulag. Humans who enjoy the Tanu society fight with other humans, and our human protagonists play a central role in much of this going forward. The shock of the travel through the portal restores Elizabeth pa Elizabeth's operant powers and also shocks latent powers of Felice and Aiken into operancy. And what they do with those new powers uh, focuses is the, very much the focus of the rest of this book and the series. Now the latter part of the book mainly follows Felice and a band of rebel humans who escape from Patanu imprisonment and search for something that will give them an edge to fight back against the Tanu. There is a climatic, climactic encounter at the end of the book which resolves many of these conflicts but opens the way to many more. Now I really love this book and I love the series and I really got invested in the rich world that May created and the characters, both human and exotic, that she crafted. Not all Tanu are bad, not all humans are good. And very much there are alliances shifting between all different groups. And there are humans who like the Tanu society of the past, and there are humans who don't. Uh, and also the Fervulag, of course, although they have a human alliance, are not necessarily to be trusted. And there are perhaps hints of yet other uh, unknown threats 
um, somewhere hidden in this six million year ago Earth. So yes, as I say, fantastically uh, created characters, human and exotic, brilliant and absorbing stuff. Uh, I urge you to read The Many Colored Land. And if you do, you will not hesitate to read the other three books in the series. Now to date, there's been no feature film or TV series has been developed for this these books. And you know what? I'm quite good with that. I'm fine with it. And I think the printed page is good enough for me when it comes to this story. Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, if you like this video, then check out my other videos on science fiction novels uh, and my other content. And if you like them, please hit subscribe, click the bell for notifications. The next book in this series is yet to be chosen. So stay tuned. Till then, stay well and look to the future. <laughs>